It is the longest race of the season. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Charlotte Motor Speedway as we get ready for the running of our longest race that we will run here in Season 6 of the Snickers Cup Series. This is the Coca-Cola 600, a 60-lap event ready to be run where you're going to see fuel strategy at its best here this evening. It's going to be a wild one. There's going to be a lot of strategy. There's going to be a lot of wrecks, I'm pretty certain, and there's going to be, without a doubt, a driver who is definitely going to earn the win here tonight. We have on tap 42 drivers ready to take the green flag. And at the end of 60 laps, only one of them will emerge victorious and be able to say they won the longest race of Season 6. On the pole position for this evening's race, we got rookie pole sitter Chris Washer running for the Robbie Gordon Motorsports. He is currently going to start on the pole, which could be a big key factor into the beginning of of this race as we've seen in past history at this event a lot of times drivers the middle of the pack and the rear of the field get antsy want to get to the front as soon as possible because track position is so key here and they end up triggering wrecks if you start out in front you may be able to avoid that alongside of him a driver who knows a little bit about winning an event like this he won last season driving the number 11 for Joe Gibbs Racing Hayden Klein who's a former winner this season, won at Talladega. He'd love to be able to go back-to-back -back in winning the longest race of the season. We'll see how he does now in a Richard Childress Chevrolet. Emilio Navarrete's going to line up in the third position there for Roush Fenway Racing. Navarrete comes into this race currently sitting uh, 27th in the point standings. He needs a good run, and tonight could be the night to do it. We know he's won at endurance races like Talladega Super Speedway, where he went two for three just a while ago. And then rolling off from position number four, that is going to be Kyle Sosnowski in the 22. Sosnowski has pretty good numbers here at Lowe's as well, as I recall. And then rolling off, completing the top five, is going to be Trent Dunham. Dunham is trying to work his way inside the top ten in the point standings, currently 14th in points, trying to also pick up his second win of the season, as he formerly won at Dover. Tonight, the point standings come in pretty close as well, so I'll tell you, the strategy is not only going to be for who's going to win this race, but the strategy is also going to be for who's going to be able to top who and get some spots in the standings as we are here on race number 17 which means that we have only nine more races until we head to the chase for the championship charles jackson comes into this race with a 14 point advantage over ralph mason then three points back to his kyotech racing teammate anthony mccrory 29 points back to austin laplante and then a total of 37 points back to fifth in standings, Danny Wells. Drew Austin, John Radigan, they bring their rookie points battle here into Charlotte. Right now, Drew Austin with a seven-point advantage. I'm sorry, nope, a nine-point advantage over John Radigan. They are sixth and seventh in points as well. Dougie Shears, William Duncan, and Adam Chambers cracks the top ten as they head into tonight's race. And I'll tell you what, one team that we really should keep an eye on, too, is the RCR boys, Danny Wells, 5th in points, Adam Chambers, 10th in points, and Madison Sieber comes in 11th in the standings. The only other driver that we haven't talked about is the Hayden Klein machine, who's the defending race winner. So keep your eyes on the Richard Childress cars during the course of this evening's race. Time to get these cars rolling off, though. They're going to complete a couple of pace laps, and while they do that, we will show you the starting lineup. Only one driver has a win here so far this weekend, and that is Austin LaPlante. He ended up winning the Truck Series event, and he's obviously trying to run down Charles Jackson for the points lead as he'll roll off from position number eight. Without further ado, folks, here is your starting lineup for the longest race of the evening. Whose fuel mileage, whose fuel strategy, whose pit strategy in general will end up getting them to victory lane? We're moments away from finding out.
This is probably this season the closest thing we're going to get to to an endurance race. And with that being said, I want you guys to be sure and check out Silver Machine 9000's channel very soon. The 2.4 hours of Le Mans will be run over on that channel. The longest race in NR2003 history. Hope you'll tune in for that. I'm going to be uh, having the pleasure of co-commentating in that race and everything. I'm sure it's going to be an absolutely exciting event. But we're ready to run the Coke 600. These drivers are two. Green flag is out. Let's do it. Let's see who's going to be the last man standing at the end of 60 laps. They did a pretty good job in the Truck Series and Mobile Cup Series events of not having that caution flag come out. No caution in the Truck Series race. Only one caution in the Mobile Cup Series event. What about tonight? Can these drivers keep it clean and race clean and green until our first pit stop or will we end up having caution flags come out? They're looking about almost going three wide there for the lead. Trent Dunham looking underneath Emilio Navarrete and Chris Washer as Washer gets kicked to the high side and Emilio Navarrete is going to go to the lead. Trent Dunham now there with James McLeod. Here comes Madison Sieber, who's been on a big run as of late there in the 33. Moved herself up to 11th in point standings coming into this evening's race and now looking for a spot inside of the top 10 in points. As Trent Dunham now going to look to the inside of Emilio Navarrete. McLeod tried to get the run coming out of four there to maybe go three wide. Could not do it. He'll tuck back in line behind the McDonald's Chevrolet. Come a few drivers that are doing well in the point stands. I saw Danny Wells back there, Anthony McCurry as well, and I also think I saw the, uh, yep, the 15 of Austin LaPlante getting stuck in the middle there. That's not where LaPlante wants to be, I can guarantee you that, as McLeod now goes to the bottom, and he'll look for the top spot off of Trent Dunham. These drivers, tell you what, they're swapping the lead around like a hot potato. They really are not able to hold the top position very well here, and that could be a key factor into whether or not these drivers are going to want to pit early, pit late, if indeed we have to pit under the green flag. Madison Sieber now looking down to the bottom of the racetrack. Alan Tanker right behind her. And you got some drivers inside the top 10 in points. Danny Wells, Anthony McCurry, and Austin LaPlante. And how about uh, Kyle Matthews there too, running the Alltel scheme on that Ford. Had a great debut race last week at Daytona where he ended up, uh, I think he ended up finishing top 10 if I recall. And he also started on the pole for that race and he's running very well here tonight for the Penske Germain boys. Comes Danny Wells down to the inside line. You know, I talked with uh, uh, with Kyle Matthews before this evening's race. I talked to him about his run at Daytona and everything. He said he headed into that race wanting to prove himself. He wanted to show to everybody that he could race with these guys regardless of the fact that he had limited experience. And also the plant got loose and he just got turned. He almost had his say and he just got turned around. And oh, the big, oh, big wreck. Cole Dowley's gotten a piece of it. There's Michael Norman. He slides up into Dougie Shears. Angel Navarro's involved. Deanna Shelton's got a piece of it. The nine of Drew Austin, Derek Reed, or not Derek Reed, I'm sorry, Kyle White, or Kevin White. Boy, I'm having trouble here. He's involved as well. Henley may have gotten a piece of it as everybody else slows down, and the caution flag is going to come out. LaPlante slid across the start finish line in the 12th position. That's where he's going to restart, apparently. He's trying to wait to get by Dylan Poteet. Did anybody else get pieces of that incident? I don't know for certain. James Silverfox, uh, looks like he got through it okay. Deanna Shelton may not have actually gotten any damage from that. I don't know. And pit stops are going on. Cole Daly is on the pit road. He's got damage. And Henry Nova is going to stay out. Henry Nova is deciding to stay out and lead a lap here as Danny Wells and everybody else is going to come down pit road. Trent Dunham's in. Madison Zebra's in. McCrory, McLeod, Aaron Williams Jr., Galligan, Navarrete, Tanker, Washer, Klein. Damage on the 22 of Kyle Sosnowski as you see him pull into his pit stall. Kyle Matthews also on pit road and Cole Daly. Everybody else, I think, is deciding to stay out or else they haven't quite made it around to pit road yet. I don't know what the case is. As it looks like Danny Wells is going to be first off first on pit road. Oh, wait a minute, Chris Washer. He's going to beat him out. Chris Washer beats Danny Wells off pit road. Great pit strategy there by the seven, the pole sitter. And Henry Nova is going to be the leader under the caution flag. He decides not to come down pit road this time. So the 18 on a different pit sequence from everybody else. We've got to jump back see what happened to Austin LaPlante who came in fourth in points. He almost had it saved but got turned around. Let's see what happened to the 15. Well, let's take a look and see what happened. LaPlante actually went down the apron. You see his car slide up right in front of everybody. And a little bit of contact there with Madison Sieber. His car slides loose. And there's nothing Kyle Matthews can do. He's going to get into the 15. Turns LaPlante around and... Boy, Kyle did a pretty good job getting through there. He could have very easily been swept up into this. But there you see, right there, Cole Daly just running all by himself, not doing anything, minding his own business. He gets involved. Sosnowski, pretty hard lick right there as the 15 gets airborne. Michael Norman gets turned around, I think, by Deanna Shelton. 
Hayden Klein able to somehow slither through there. There you see Dougie Shears. He runs into the Michael Norman machine. And then everybody else, I think for the most part, was able to get by this with minimal or no damage. Mary Cole back in that smoke there. Our winner last week from Daytona, Kevin White. Oh, he gets into the back of Angel Navarro there. That's how the 41 got his damage. William Duncan's right behind the 41. I think he got through it okay. Jake Cole gets by. I think everybody else got through there without any damage. Only drivers that really had any kind of significant damage were the 41, the 15, the 3, 17, and the 22, if I'm not mistaken. And that's what put us under the caution flag. Austin the plant getting loose, gets turned around, and a few drivers get involved in it, but I think we really dodged a bullet there. A lot of drivers could have really been involved in this one and ex sustained some extensive damage, but we dodge a bullet here. Could have been the big one, but it really wasn't. But we do have our first caution of the evening here in the Coke 600. Lots more racing to go. Let's get back to a restart. We'll go back to green. Henry Nova is the leader. John Cedina going to restart ahead of him. John Cedina was able to get out ahead of the leaders, but not ahead of the pace car. So he will restart on the tail end of the lead lap. Will John Cedino? So a tough break for John Cedino early on in this thing. The defending Snickers Cup Series champ could very well go a lap down here if he is not able to keep the 18 in his rearview mirror. Henry Nova is the leader though. Chris Washer is in second. Here come a few cars that are a lap down. Charles Jackson, Joshua Michaels, Ralph Mason, Adam Chambers, and Richard Johnson. Not exactly sure how they got trapped a lap down, but nonetheless, there they are. They'll try and get back on the tail and lead lap here on this run. Danny Wells will restart in third. Kyle Sosnowski with no hood. He's going to be fourth. Fifth place is going to be Alan Tanker. Anthony McCurry will be in sixth. James McLeod, seventh. 8th is Kyle Matthews, Trent Dunham in 9th, and 10th is Sean Galligan. Rest of the top 20 here are Amelia Navarrete, Hayden Klein, Madison Sieber, Aaron Williams Jr., and James Silverfox. That's top 15. His teammate Drew Austin, 16th, Diana Shelton in 17th, 18th, Jake Cole, 19th, William Duncan, and Cole Daly completes the top 20. I don't know if any drivers are going to be out of the race as a result of what just happened. The only one I'm thinking that could possibly be out of the race could be the uh, Austin the Plant Machine. And nope, nobody is out of the race. Just a few cars a lap down and one on the tail end of the lead lap. Let's see what happens now. The leader we're looking at, Henry Nova, the M&M's Pretzel Toyota. So we get ready to go back to green flag racing. Let's see if Jackson, Cittadino, Michaels, all of them can keep themselves on the tail end of the lead lap. John Cittadino trying to block Henry Nova. Jackson trying to go to the inside of his teammate, get himself back on the tail end of the lead lap. Michaels trying to do the same. Ralph Mason's on that inside line, too, along with Chambers and Richard Johnson. They want to get back on the tail end of the lead lap. Looks like they're going to be able to do it here if they can freight train the 18. John Cittadino stays ahead. Currently on the tail end of the lead lap. Jackson gets by. He's back on the tail end of the lead lap. Michael's turn as he'll go to the inside of the 18. Then you got Mason lined up there and Adam Chambers. And Richard Johnson got spun in front of the field. Caution's out. But they're going to have to race it back to the line. Let's see if Chambers or Mason can get back on the tail of the lead lap. Uh-oh, Cittadino slips up. Cittadino slips up. He could go a lap down again. Jackson currently is on the lead lap. Michaels is currently on the lead lap. Mason looking to get on the lead lap. And Cittadino now falls a lap down again. Can Chambers get by Henry Nova here coming off this corner? Oh, Mason slips up, almost gets into the leader. And Mason is going to get back on the tail of the lead lap by a splitter. Whoa, Henry Nova, look out. Whoa, nearly bounced off of Adam Chambers. He'll keep the top spot, though. But it looks like Chambers is still going to be a lap down. And Cittadino will still be a lap down. But looks like Michaels, Jackson, and Mason are back on the tail end of the lead lap. And somebody else has spun. That's Tim Walsh down there on the inside line. Something has happened to the five of Tim Walsh. They see Jackson moving by to get back on the lead lap. Mason doing the same. But Tim Walsh has got heavy duty damage to his five car. He was 22nd last time by. I don't know if the incident was involving him or not. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on up here? I don't know. Mason's going to stay out. Oh, Galligan's got damage. Dylan Young is damaged. Jake Cole is damaged as well. So is Rohe Vidarvu. And we know this started with the lap car of Richard Johnson, who is now heading to pit road right now. Caution is out. Let's jump to the leader, who I think was Henry Nova. There he is, getting his pit service here. It looks like everybody on the lead lap came down pit road, but a few drivers are coming out ahead of him. Stephen Pollard the third's come out. Noah Hart's come out. Mary Cole. We're seeing the pit strategy happening, and I think, is Aaron Williams Jr. the leader? No, he isn't. The leader is... I don't know who the leader is. It could be Kyle Matthews in the 12. 
I think it is. I think it's Kyle Matthews, then McLeod, Klein, Williams Jr., and Deanna Shelton, the top five. Pit stops going on here. There's damage to Drew Austin. I don't know if he got that from an early incident or not, but nonetheless, we're under the caution flag. We're going to head back and take a look at a replay of what happened. I do believe that the leader right now is Kyle Matthews in the 12. Well, it looks like uh, Richard Johnson, the lap car, gets caught in the middle of this battle for third. Alan Tanker going to go down and on the inside line, and he's going to slide up almost reminiscent of what happened to LaPlante. And he's going to hook the 11 of Richard Johnson around. And this is where the bad stuff starts to happen. Richard Johnson going to slide right back up the racetrack. And Anthony McCrory is going to get it right in the driver's side door. How McCrory saved it, I don't really know. That was a pretty hard lick for the Monster Energy Audi. And there you see Galligan nowhere to go. He's going to get collected hard into the outside retaining wall. And then as everybody tries to avoid, it just is, takes one driver getting clipped. And I think it was actually all these drivers backing up. Yeah, it was. Jake Cole's going to run to the back of Kyle Sosnowski. And then everybody just held up back here. Richard, uh, make the Trent Dunham gets held up here. And there you see, there they go. They start shoving into each other. Vadar went to the back of Dylan Young, into the back of Angel Navarro. And there you see Cody Lamas getting a piece of it. But there was also damage to the five of Tim Walsh. There he is. Does he hit the Angel Navarro machine? Yes, he does. But there must have been something else that happened because there was some more really damaged race cars. Let's, let's go to the five of Tim Walsh, shall we? Mary Cole sustained some damage there. She hit the Navarro machine. Let's uh, fast forward a little bit here. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, it was Dylan Young. Someone got into Dylan Young again. Dylan Young had already been damaged. After he ran into the back, I think it was of uh, Angel Navarro. Oh, and he was off the pace here. He was, he was continuing on, and apparently he was a little off the pace or something. Trent Dunham comes in with a full head of steam. Watch the McDonald's Chevrolet come into view. He's trying to slice and dice his way through traffic. And I don't know if the, the one car got loose or what. He did come up a little. He slid up a little and then slides right into the back of the Miller Lite Ford. And there you see Drew Austin getting a piece of it as well. So Trent Dunham, who was running really well before this caution flight, is going to get involved and then watch Tim Walsh. T-Bones, the two, and Dylan Young... And the gold-painted Miller Lite Ford flipping end over end. Cody Lamas gets another piece of that one there. Mary Cole gets it with the left right, uh, ref, left front. And look at the Dylan Young machine. Nose diving and everything. Spinning on his nose. It's a wonder that car did not flip into the infield and take out some of those infield lights. Oh my goodness. Wild ride there for Dylan Young under the caution flag, no less. And fortunately, the weight distribution in that car is going to force it back onto all four wheels. Fortunately, we didn't have to do an evacuation of a driver with the car ending up upside down. Dylan Young, the window net down to say that he is okay, but a crazy ride there for Dylan Young. And Dylan Young has really been on a cold streak as of late. Currently 13th in points coming into this evening's race. We haven't even really talked about the point stands at all with drivers that were involved in these things and few drivers are going to take a few hits in the point stands, including Dylan Young and Richard Johnson, 12th and 13th in points. Also, fill in Trent Dunham and Sean Galligan, too, 14th, 15th in points involved in these incidents that have just taken place. So, that may be a little bit of insurance for the drivers who came in top 10 in the standings to maybe stay inside the top 10 in points. But still, there's a long ways to go, and some of these drivers may actually try and continue with damaged race cars. Because remember, this is an endurance race, and there's a long way to go. Getting ready to go back to green flag racing on lap 16 of 60. You're looking at the leader right now, believe it or not. That is Kyle Matthews out in front. And look at the drivers he's going to have to get by. There are some drivers that are on the tail end of the lead lap, including Adam Chambers, Angel Navarro, William Duncan, and Jake Cole. Deanna Shelton is lined up on the inside line a lap down, along with Silver Fox, Mary Cole, Noah Hart, Stephen Puller III, Carson Gum, Galligan, Michaels, Lamas, Vedarabu, Citadino, Henley, LaPlante, Johnson, and Drew Austin. All those drivers trying to get themselves back on the tail end of the lead lap. Let's take a look at the way they're going to run here, if we can. Kyle Matthews is the leader. It actually, I think, would be easier to actually go to our uh, scoring monitor and find out who is running where. 
Kyle Matthews, the leader, Silver, or make that uh, McLeod rather, is going to restart in second. Hayden Klein, third. Aaron Williams Jr., fourth. His teammate Cole Daly will be fifth. Dylan Poteet, sixth. Dougie Shears, remember he got involved in that incident with the uh, 15 sliding right up in front of him? Well, he's going to get, or Michael Norman slid up in front of him rather. But he's going to restart seventh. Eighth, John Radigan. Ninth is going to be Kevin White with Michael Norman in the tenth position. There are a few drivers back behind the wall, two of them to be exact, Tim Walsh and Dylan Young making early exits here from the Coke 600. Here we go, green flags out. How is Kyle Matthews going to deal with lap traffic around him? We've seen him in restricted plate racing. I don't think he's ever been put in this situation before, though. Let's see how he's going to be able to adapt. He's going to try and get around some of these guys, but right now a lot of drivers have been able to work themselves back on the tail end of the lead lap. Jake Cole's on the tail lead lap now. So is Silver Fox, Shelton, Duncan, Navarro. And now Kyle Matthews can go to work. He's going to go underneath Jake Cole, try and put him a lap down again. Whoa, gets on that apron there where they can get really squirrely, really loose. Look out, Mary Cole makes contact with her Tweenies racing teammate, James McLeod. As Noah Hart goes underneath them, that driver is currently a lap down. Three wide up ahead, though. Silver Fox wants by, and then Chambers is scraping the wall. Chambers is going to go a lap down now. Navarro's back a lap down. Kyle Matthews doing a pretty good job here. I think he's learning fast. Here he'll now go to the inside of his teammate, Deanna Shelton, trying to put her a lap down again. Jake Cole just ahead. William Duncan and James Silver Fox, they're hoping. They're praying for a caution flag, and they're not getting one yet. Deanna Shelton now goes a lap down to the leader. William Duncan now falls off the lead lap. Jake Cole is next as now here comes Kyle Matthews to the inside of the state water heater Chevy. Looks like he's going to let the 39 car go for now. And now Shelton wants to get back to the inside of her teammate and get back on the tail end of the lead lap. Let's see how hard the 13 races the 12. Doesn't look like it's going to be that hard because now Kyle Matthews back on the hunt there of the 39. Meanwhile, second place is under contest back here. Carson Gum has it. Aaron Williams. Oh no, Carson Gum's a lap down. Aaron Williams Jr. is actually in second. Dylan Poteet's now moved to third. McLeod in fourth. And Cole Daly now is currently in fifth place. Pretty good run tonight for two of the Hendrick Motorsports boys. The 24 and the 88. And Jake Cole is now falling off the lead lap. He's a lap down again. Next driver in line for Kyle Matthews is James Silverfox. But wait a minute. Jake Cole, crossover move, looks to go back to the inside and get his lap back. And he's opened the door now for all these lap cars to get to the inside. Kyle Matthews nearly got the wall. Jake Cole back on the lead lap. Chambers now looks to get back on the lead lap. Same for Noah Hart. And look who's coming, utilizing those lap cars, Aaron Williams Jr. Can he use those cars as a pick? Whoa, Noah Hart! Going on the apron there off of four. They can get awfully squarely, awfully loose and go up into traffic. As Adam Chambers tries to go back on the lead lap. Looks like he'll do so. Noah Hart doing the same. And here comes the battle for the lead. The 24 of Aaron Williams Jr. on the inside. The 12 of Kyle Matthews on the high side. Whoa, almost some contact there between Matthews and Chambers. As now Noah Hart's going to go to the inside. And here comes the 24 of Aaron Williams Jr. Just biding his time, waiting for the moment to be able to slide underneath the Altel Ford. McLeod right behind there as well. Dylan Poteet's in the hunt. Hayden Klein's right there as well as now he has been able to get by Cole Daly for fifth place. And here we go. Aaron Williams Jr. to the bottom. Aaron Williams Jr. to the lead. First time tonight leading for the 24. And now he'll start to be the driver that'll try and put drivers a lap down again. He'll go to the inside now of the Noah Hart machine. Try and put him back down a lap. Meanwhile, though, he's being hounded for the lead by James McLeod. Dylan Poteet right there as well. Noah Hart falls off the lead lap again. Adam Chambers is next. Let's see if Chambers can be able to play some defense here. He'll try to slide down in front of the 24. Can't do it. Silver Fox slips up. He almost got the wall. Now it's going to be two for the price of one for Aaron Williams Jr. So he'll go by both the 29 and the 19. Whoa, did he get loose right there? Oh, he's bouncing off the 29. Careful. Oh, my God. Goodness gracious sakes alive, they were literally leaning on each other through turns three and four where Adam Chambers and Aaron Williams Jr. But somehow, someway, by some miracle, they keep it together as now Jake Cole is about to go a lap down and it'll be the lead lap cars getting out in front. But there's another slower car up ahead. I'm not exactly sure who exactly that is. I'm trying to see if I can find out here without having to jump up ahead because this is a great battle going on here. Oh, it's the Sean Gallagher machine. Sean Gallagher ahead. And they're going to encounter him. Look out. Oh, Aaron Williams Jr. goes to the high side. McLeod goes low along with his teammate Dylan Pote. Battle for the lead. McLeod's going to use the Sean Gallagher machine as a pick. Phoenix Racing working together there. 
two lead lap cars, one lap down car, and Airways Jr. gets spun by Jake Cole! Airways Jr. just got spun around by Jake Cole! And there's no caution, now caution is out! Oh, Kevin's gotta be careful bringing that car back up onto the racetrack, look out! Airways Jr. was running in the third position, he slid, and Jake Cole got into him. That 24 car looked awfully loose in the last few laps and apparently he's going to pay the price here. He gets spun around and he's going to cross the stripe in the 16th position this time after he was up in the third position. I think James McLeod is the current leader, but what a tough break there for the 24 of Aaron Williams Jr. Yes indeed, McLeod is the leader, Poteet second, Klein is in third with I believe Duncan in fourth and fifth place I believe is Cole Daly. And they're going to make pit stops. Even the lap down cars are coming down this time. McLeod going to come down pit road. Is anybody going to work strategy and stay out? I don't think so. And I don't think Cole Daly is actually running in the, uh, the fifth position. I think it's actually Duncan and then Radigan and then Cole Daly in seventh. Nope, nobody is going to stay out. Everybody's coming down pit road. There is the Aaron Williams Jr. machine. Still on the lead lap. A great save by the 24, but I think he's going to be a little upset there. He was running really well. McLeod trying to leave pit road as there's contact on pit road between several drivers. Look out. Hayden Klein completes his service. Almost hits Mary Cole and looks like it's going to be McLeod first off, then Poteet, then Hayden Klein. That's going to be the top three, I think, as we get back for the restart. Yep, everybody came down pit road. McLeod will be the leader under caution. Let's head back, take a look at a replay of what happened to the 24. Oh, that's what happened right there. Off of turn two, Aaron Williams Jr. got loose and got the wall. And then comes down into the 39 of Jake Cole. And yet another near miss by Hayden Klein. It's the second time he's been able to just avoid near disaster. And watch right here. What a great job of driving by Aaron Williams Jr. Could have very easily nosed it down to the inside retaining wall. He's locking up the brakes, locking up the brakes as hard as he can. He does nose it a little bit, but not very much damage there to the 24. And amazingly enough, look up at the top right, right there. That's when the caution decides to come out. I think they thought maybe the 24 was going to slide up in front of traffic in turn three. That's when they decided to throw the caution. So a big, big break there for Aaron Williams Jr. He could very well have not had a caution come out. And if that had been the case, he could have easily fallen off the lead lap or something. So big break that the caution came out for the spin of the 24 Aaron Williams Jr. looked like he had a very ill-handling race car right there. Hopefully, they'll be able to get some adjustments, some more Goodyear fresh tires, and uh, he'll be good to go. So, let's head back now to the restart. Getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing one more time. We will have reached the halfway point next time around. James McLeod, the leader, over his teammate Dylan Poteet. Then it's Hayden Klein, John Radigan, and Cole Daly. That is the top five. The lap cars lined up. On the inside line, let's give you a full field rundown of the lead lap cars if we can here. We gave you the top five. Sixth place starting is going to be Kyle Matthews with Kevin White in seventh. Eighth, Charles Jackson, the points leader. Anthony McCurry in ninth, and Madison Sieber is in tenth. Then it's going to be Henry Nova, Dougie Shears, Chris Washer, Emilio Navarro, and Aaron Williams Jr. restart in 15th place. Alan Tanker, Michael Norman, Trent Dunham, Kyle Sosnowski, and Ralph Mason are the top 20. And that's it for the drivers on the lead lap. Then you got drivers a lap down. 21st place, Adam Chambers. James Silverfox, 22nd. J. Cole, 23rd. 24th, Noah Hart, 25th. Deanna Shelton. Rest of the top 30 are William Duncan, Carson Gum, Angel Navarro, Stephen Pollard, the third, and John Cittadino. Then you got Joshua Michaels, Austin LaPlante, Mary Cole, Rohit Vidarbu, Sean Henley, Danny Wells, Cody Lamas, Drew Austin, and Richard Johnson. Three drivers back behind the wall. Sean Galligan, Tim Walsh, and Dylan Young. All right. Well, maybe Sean Galligan isn't behind, behind the wall. I don't know. He may have taken his car back there. He was off the lead lap. The cars had to go around him in order to uh, avoid wrecking under that last green flag run. We'll find out. We'll get an update on Sean Galligan, see if indeed he has been able to continue. But we're ready to go back to green flag racing here at the halfway point. Lap 30 of 60 is on the board. And James McLeod going to lead the way here. Now he's got the lap traffic to contend with here. Let's see if Adam Chambers or any of these drivers can do anything. Get by and get back on the tail end of the lead lap. Adam Chambers, who just recently worked his way into the top 10 in the points, does not want to have to finish this evening's race outside the top 10 again due to finishing a lap down. He's now back on the tail end of the lead lap. Silver Fox moves by. He's on the tail end of the lead lap. 
And now Chambers kind of playing some defense here for the rest of the lap cars. He'll block James McLeod. That allows Jake Cole to go down on the inside line. Noah Hart about to do the same. But look at now, Hayden Klein's filled the gap. This is the battle for the lead between James McLeod and Hayden Klein. Oh, Chambers slipped up. Chambers slipped up, but he keeps himself ahead of James McLeod. Now is Hayden Klein going to cut his teammate any slack? No, he'll put Chambers back a lap down. Oh, man, they're getting really, really antsy now. Really antsy. I heard someone scrape the wall back there, but I think we're still under green. No, caution came out. Flagman just threw the caution. Just after they start, they crossed the start finish line. I don't know if they crossed the start finish line before or after. They crossed it after. We're racing around one more time. Jake Cole's back in the lead lap. Silver Fox the same. Same for Noah Hart. Now Chambers side by side with his teammate. They're bouncing off each other as Chambers wants back on the tail end of the lead lap. He's trying to. Oh, he can't. Oh, oh, whoa. They did throw the caution. Okay, the pace car had to really catch up, and I thought they had crossed the strike before that caution flag came out. Apparently not. Hayden Klein is going to be the leader now, and they're going to make more pit stops. Hayden Klein's coming down. Oh, Noah Hart and Jake Cole decided to come down pit road. Why'd they do that? They should have waited and come around and then pitted, but... Alright. Caution's out, though. We gotta find out what the caution's out for. And it could have been the 10 of Joshua Michaels, maybe? I don't know. Most of these drivers are all damaged back here, so I don't really know who the caution actually came out for. Oh, I wonder if it might have been for Charles Jackson in the 20. It could very well have been. The points leader may have been the reason the caution came out. We're gonna jump back and get some confirmation on just exactly what happened to bring out this caution flag, but I think it had something to do with something on the front straightaway because these drivers were just at the middle of the front straightaway, just around the start-finish line, when the flagmen threw that caution. So let's take a look and see what happened. And this was coming off of four. They were almost four wide here. Henry Nova, Joshua Michaels, Charles Jackson, and, oh, the 10's just going to come up and kind of squeeze the 20 into the outside retaining wall. That happens right in front of third in points, Anthony McCreary. Nice miss by the 61. Austin the plant fourth in points, just barely going to get through this as well. A lot of other drivers just barely getting down beneath this incident, too. And two cars spinning on the front straightaway. That's the reason the caution comes out. Michael's in the 10, and the points leader, Charles Jackson, in the 20. Not a whole lot of extensive damage for either of those cars, but nonetheless, it's going to lose them some valuable track position as we're under the caution for what I believe is now our third time this evening. Let's go back to the restart. Well, after pit stops, we have a new race leader, rookie John Radigan. Seventh in points, second in rookie points. He is now the new leader of the Coke 600, and he's going to be the lucky fellow that has to contend with all these lap cars up ahead of him. Couple drivers on the tail end of the lead lap, Jake Cole, Noah Hart, Deanna Shelton, Stephen Polo III, and Carson Gum. All five of those drivers were able to get off pit road before John Radigan did, so they will restart ahead of Radigan on the tail end of the lead lap. There you see Chambers, Duncan, Danny Wells, Mary Cole, John Zinedino, Angel Navarro still on the inside line along with Richard Johnson, Austin LaPlante, Rohe Vidarvu, and several others that are a lap down to the leader. Here's the way they'll line up for the restart. John Radigan is the leader. Second place now is Cole Daly. Third is Hayden Klein. James McLeod in fourth and Aaron Williams Jr. After some pit strategy, he's worked his way back up to the front again. He's now in fifth. Sixth place is going to be Dylan Poteet. Seventh, Emilio Navarrete. Eighth place will be Alan Tanker with Madison Sieber in ninth. And Kevin White is in tenth. Eleventh place will be Kyle Matthews. Ralph Mason in twelfth. Thirteenth, Michael Norman. Fourteenth, Kyle Sosnowski. Chris Washer, the pole sitter, is fifteenth. Anthony McCurry, sixteenth. Seventeenth place will be Henry Nova. Dougie Shears is in 18th, 19th, James Overfox, Trent Dunham in 20th, and the last car on the lead lap is Charles Jackson in the 21st position. Let's see how John Radigan does here with this lap traffic. It's going to be a big break here with having drivers up ahead for like Adam Chambers, William Duncan, Danny Wells, Mary Cole. As soon as the green flag comes out, they're immediately back on the tail end of the lead lap as the green flag is out. These guys are just waiting for a quick caution. Then they can immediately get back in on the tail end of the lead lap. As here comes Radigan on the high side trying to get around Mary Cole and John Cittadino. Looks like he is going to clear both those cars and he'll put them back down on the lap down chart. And it allowed him to actually get away too. Cole Daly and Hayden Klein having trouble getting through this traffic as now John Radigan goes to the inside of Deanna Shelton. Tries to put her back down a lap. Or is the caution out? Nope, caution's not out. Deanna Shelton now falls off the lead lap. Next driver for John Radigan to contend with.
will be Carson Gum. Well, maybe not. Noah Hart almost got the wall off that corner. I look at Deanna Shelton battling back hard on the high side as John Cittadino starts to close in here. Cittadino may have thoughts about getting back on the tail end of lane lap too. I think Cittadino may have actually gotten held up behind Mary Cole on that restart, and that's what caused him to not be able to stay ahead of the 14. As John Radigan still continues to lead, now Stephen Paul at the third goes a lap down. Noah Hart will go a lap down. William Duncan's next. He will go a lap down as he gets really loose off of turn number two. Next driver in line for Radigan is the 56 of Carson Gum. Well, maybe not. Adam Chambers, who's been in the last few restarts, trying to keep himself on the tail of the lead lap, hasn't been able to do so. Caution's out. Caution's out. Race to the line. Can Chambers keep ahead of Radigan? I think he did. I think he did. Official results. Wait a minute. Is Chambers on the lead lap? Yes, he is. So is Carson Gum. So, too, is Jake Cole. And so is Danny Wells. Noah Hart will be the first car one lap down now. As the caution comes out, looks like another spin heading into three. And this time it involved Ralph Mason, second in points. Angel Navarro, Dougie Shears, and Rohit Vidarvo all had something to do with it too, I think. And Dylan Poteet as well. So the caution flag waves again. Three happy drivers right here. Cole, Wells, Gum, and Chambers. Back on the tail end of the lead lap, Kyle Matthews is on pit row too. I don't know if he had something to do with this, but John Radigan's going to stay out. Radigan will not come to pit road, and that's not going to be a good break for Noah Hart or John Cittadino, who, if Radigan had come to pit road, could have maybe gotten themselves back on the tail end of the lead lap now. Radigan's the leader. I think McLeod is now second, with Hayden Klein in third place. But the caution is out. We got 20 laps to go next time around. Let's take a look and see what happened. A lot of top contenders involved in this one. I think it could be very easily due to lap traffic. I was going to start with the 48 of Angel Navarro, who was off the lead lap. His car, he may have actually blown a tire or something. He goes right up into the outside retaining wall, almost similar to what happened to his teammate, Aaron Williams Jr. I bet they're running the same setups, and apparently it's not working out well for them off of two. He's going to bounce off the Hayden Climb machine. Then come down, bounce off his Hendrick Motorsports teammate, Cole Daly, and then this is where it all happens. He's going to slide right in front of the field. Dylan Pote thinks he can get around, cannot, nails the 48 right up in front of Mary Cole. Nowhere for her to go. Navarrete and Aaron Jr. do a great job getting through this, and then everybody else just trying to work their way through. Madison Seaburr is able to slow down in time. Everybody else, though, trying to avoid. Someone else just slid up in front of everybody just up ahead. I don't know who that was. Oh, Vedarvu hard into the 48. Drew Austin in there. And there they come. Cody Lamas, Ralph Mason, Dougie Shears, Sosnowski, Dunham. Oh, man, Mary Cole was the one that spun up further ahead. And there you see the 48 of uh, Angel Navarro flipping upside down, end over end. Another wild ride for another driver. This time it's the 48 of Angel Navarro, and he's going to land right on top of the roof of the 9 of Drew Austin. And look at the cars littered here. Norman, Sosnowski, Mason, Shears, Dunham, Vedarvu, Austin. Navarro and Mary Cole, and I'm, I'm looking here, and I'm seeing at least three drivers inside the top ten in points. Mason, Austin, and Dougie Shears involved in this one. So that is a tough, tough break for Ralph Mason, who could have very easily run down Charles Jackson for the points lead tonight. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, and Dougie Shears, he could fall outside of the top ten in points with a Bad run tonight. Same for Drew Austin. And there's Dylan Pote. The bad luck continues for the Wonder Bread Chevy team out of Tweenix Racing. They just cannot seem to catch a break as he absolutely clobbered the 48 of Angel Navarro. And there you see the 12 of Kyle Matthews. Did, did Kyle... I'm almost... Oh, yeah. Did, I think... I think... I think... I think... I was going to say, did Kyle Matthews get turned coming off of four? I think he did. Yes, he did. Let's take a look here and see what happens here. These drivers had just gotten through that incident in turn three. And Michaels and McCurry wanted to come back to onto the racetrack. I think Matthews wanted to come to pit road. Difference of agendas. And oh no, oh no. Rest in peace, caution cone. He's going to get taken out by three cars. Oh dear. It's been a while since we've had a caution cone death on pit road. And looks like that's going to happen tonight. As the 12 of Kyle Matthews spins around and then Mike, uh, Matthews decided, oh, you know what? Wait a doggone minute. That might have been a veteran move by the 12. Look right here. Watch carefully. We're going to go to the helicopter view. 
I was trying to figure out why did he come to pit road? He didn't have to. Maybe he did. Yes. Oh, Anthony McCurry should have come to pit road too. And Michaels. They all crossed the commitment line. And Kyle Matthews, what a heads up move by his spotter realizing that the front splitter of his car, the 12 car, had gone across the line that he had to come to pit road. McCrory and Michaels with not pitting may actually get penalties. I don't know. But all three of those cars did cross the commitment line with the nose of their vehicles and had to come down pit road. What a veteran move there by the Altel Ford by a guy only making his second start in the Snickers Cup Series realizing he had to come down pit road. I don't know if that's just the fact that he's a rookie and doesn't want to, you know, take any risks or the fact that he actually knew he had come down pit road, but regardless of the fact, great, great job by the 12. McCrory, though, he's going to drive away. His spotter, I don't know if he's telling him, hey, you got to come down pit road here. You crossed the commitment line, but nonetheless, good job by Chris, Chris, uh, uh, by Kyle Matthews, rather, to realize he had to come down pit road. But nonetheless, though, we're going to head back for a restart. I think we got a few more drivers that are going to go behind the wall, though, as this endurance race rolls on. Getting ready to go back to green flag racing. John Radigan had to contend with the lap cars the last restart. He'll have to do it again, but this time there'll be no drivers ahead of him to have to contend with in the outside line. He'll just be able to contend with the inside line, and that will be a welcome change, I am sure. McLeod will line up in second, Hayden Klein third, Cold Alley fourth, and the pole sitter Chris Washer has moved his way back up to fifth place. Sixth place for the restart is going to be Alan Tanker with Silver Fox up to seventh now after he worked his way back on the tail of the lead lap. Charles Jackson, the points leader, has worked his way back to, up to eighth. Ninth place is going to be Madison Sieber and Henry Nova is in tenth. Kevin White runs in eleventh. Twelfth place is Trent Dunham. McCurry, thirteenth. Fourteenth, Michael Norman. Fifteenth place is going to be Jake Cole. Danny Wells, who worked his way back onto the tail end of the lead lap with Jake Cole. He'll be sixteenth. Same for Carson Gum in seventeenth. Same for Adam Chambers in eighteenth. Amelia Navarrete and Aaron Williams Jr., they end up making some pit stops under that caution. They'll restart in 19th and 20th. Also back there in 21st and 22nd are Kyle Matthews and Kyle Sosnowski. First car one lap down, that is the Noah Hart machine, currently running in the 23rd position. Drivers that are now behind the wall after everything that went down include Dylan Poteet, Ralph Mason, Dougie Shears, Mary Cole, Angel Navarro, and Rohit Vidarbu. They join Galligan, Tim Walsh, and Dylan Young back in the garage area. Time to go back to green flag racing here. We'll have a total, I believe, of 18 to go when the green flag comes back out. John Radigan trying to win his second race of the season. Here in his rookie season, the green flag is out. See how much of a contender Noah Hart will be on that inside line there. John Cittadino, William Duncan, Deanna Shelton, you can bet they're hoping he's going to be a big team player here, and it looks like it's going to work. Noah Hart to the lead, or not to the lead, but back on the lead lap. John Cittadino now going to try and do the same. Here comes William Duncan on the inside line as well. They're trying to make sure that those other drivers do not get ahead of him, those lead lap drivers. And it looks like, nope, McLeod's going to try and block William Duncan as they're three wide. The 51 and the 14 are battling for the lead. The 6 is trying to get back on the tail lead lap, and he cannot get by James McLeod. New leader, James McLeod, as he'll bypass Radigan. And now they need another quick caution to Cittadino and Noah Hart, or else they're going to go a lap down again. Noah Hart stuck on the high side, and we're still green flag racing. Noah Hart will now fall off the lead lap one more time, our winner from Darlington. Cittadino now ends up slipping up, and that may end up allowing McLeod to put him back a lap down as Deanna Shelton went through the grass area there a moment ago. Oh, oh, is that a caution? Nope, someone just made a pit stop. I don't know who it was, but someone just came on to pit road. Who was that? I don't know who it was. Maybe I saw the pace car, but I thought I saw a driver come off pit road. Nonetheless, battle for the lead again. Radigan trying to get to the inside of McLeod. Then it's a ways back there to third place battle between Chris Washer, Alan Tanker, and James Silverfox. Coming down to crunch time, folks. Just about every one of these drivers have made at least two pit stops during the night. Some of them have made three. So I don't know if they're good to go or not. As next time around, it's going to be a total of 16 laps to go before the checkered flag waves here in the longest race of the season. The Coke 600 as Radigan goes to the inside line. But here comes Chris Washer, three wide for the lead. What a move there by the rookie pole sitter. He's going to go three wide for the top spot, heading into turn number one. Alan Tanker going to follow him there as McLeod gets the wall. He's riding the wall through turns one and two. Look out. Oh, no, no. Don't wreck with somebody, please. Oh, boy, that was close. They all got by the 51, but McLeod's going to lose some valuable, valuable track position. And he may have just disappeared from view 
in winning this thing. Here comes Alan Tanker down the inside line. Number of his Roush Fenway teammates have gone to victory lane already this season. Dougie Shears, William Duncan. Tanker would love to be the third one out of Roush Fenway. But here comes Silver Fox down to the bottom. Getting a little bit of help there from his good buddy Noah Hart. They're not teammates, but they are good buddies off track. And it looks like Silver Fox can go three wide for the lead. Noah Hart looking like he's going to go four wide. Oh, no. Careful, careful. Oh, Tanker squeezes Washer to the wall. There goes Washer. Noah Hart's up into Tanker. And the big one's going to happen. Holy cow, they're wrecking everywhere all over the front straightaway. Cole Daly is in it. Citadino, and they're all piling in. Oh my goodness, there are too many to count. LaPlante, Jake Cole, Carson Gum, Daly, McLeod, Wells, Sieber, Noah Hart is upside down. Deanna Shelton's involved in it. Henry Nova is smoking, and if you name them, they're probably in it. Chambers got a piece of it. Duncan got a piece of it. So did Tanker. The only one who looks like he got through it was Silver Fox. Oh my goodness gracious sakes alive. John Radigan, who had been leading a majority of this race in the closing stage, is involved. Noah Hart's on pit road. Aaron Williams Jr. is on pit road. Here comes Duncan. Anthony McCurry is smoking. Michael Norman is involved. Mike, uh, Joshua Michaels is involved. There's Nova. Another car smoking on the inside line. I don't know who that is. Richard Johnson's involved. Deanna Shelton is smoking. Sieber is out. Henley may have been involved. Navarrete's in it. Wells, Cole, points leader Jackson, LaPlante, Daly, Citadino. Oh my goodness. Lots and lots of drivers involved in this one. And the only one who appears to have made it through all this without any damage was the guy who was leading at the moment that wreck happened, and that is James Silverfox in the 19. 10 laps to go when we come around next time by it will be a single file restart when we get back to green flag racing it may be about six laps to go i think when we get back to green but nonetheless caution is out lots of damaged race cars now let's take a look and see what happened the big one if you can say that at charlotte has occurred in the closing stages of this race man this was some good hard racing that just took a dead turn to disaster Right there, Chris Washer going to clip the right rear of Alan Tanker as they get into the wall. Then Washer comes down off the nose of John Radigan, just clips Noah Hart, and Hart's going to go for a wild, wild ride. We'll document that in a moment. But Chris Washer going to come back up the racetrack into Radigan, and then it's just on from there. Jackson nowhere to go. Deanna Shelton, Cole Daly, they're all just held up back here. Oh, William Duncan may have gotten through this. Uh, maybe not. Nope, he's going to hit Noah Hart. There's Nova. He gets shoved into it. Cole Daly got jacked up by someone. Then he landed right on the hood of Adam Chambers. I think it was actually James McLeod who jacked up the 88. There's Danny Wells. There's Kevin White. Stephen Paul III, nowhere to go. And they all just start piling in. Navarrete, Aaron Williams Jr., Joshua Michaels, Carson Gum, Jake Cole, LaPlante. Henley's going to come in, jump into this. And, oh my goodness. Hayden Klein gets a piece of it. That's a lot of our lead lap cars involved right here. And, oh, man, Henley got hit by another driver there. Holy cow, he got hit two or three times. Who's he getting hit by? Oh, McCrory and Richard Johnson. And then here come more. Not even slowing down. Michael Norman straight into Richard Johnson. Sosnowski straight into Michael Norman. Dunham into it. Drew Austin into it. And, yeah. I think you know how this story ends. Look at all the damaged cars. My goodness. And then Kyle Matthews is going to come into view here. And I don't know if he slows down in time or not, but good heavens. And there's the Noah Hart machine. We're going to jump now to the 47 and document his wild ride there. Tough break for that rookie. Just a couple weeks after winning at Darlington. Goes for a barrel roll at Charlotte. We've had a lot of drivers flip over here tonight and you know this is not a track that's known for it either and watch right here there we go up into the Allen Tanker machine Citadino I think is going to be the one that's going to flip him over right there's the hit wow Radigan gets airborne up onto the uh, outside safer barrier for a moment and the 47 is going to go sliding across the start finish line on his roof and then there's the hit from William Duncan and then I think the 47 is just going to catch the grass on the infield here and it's just going to send his car barrel rolling Look at the hit there for Cole Daly and Madison Sieber. Sieber got jacked up by her teammate Danny Wells. And there's Noah Hart sliding, barrel rolling. Henry Nova's going to slide 
through this D-shaped front straightaway, and I think he's going to back his M&M's Toyota hard into the outside retaining wall. Yes, indeed, he is right there. And Noah Hart sliding down the front straightaway on his roof. My goodness, crazy stuff happening here. And we're getting ready for what could potentially be our final restart of the evening. And we may have only a handful of lead lap cars left to battle it out for the win here tonight in the Coke 600. Well, we've had wrecks, we've had flips, we've had pit strategy, we've had great racing, we've had drivers that fall laps down and try and get them back, and it all's going to come down to this moment. We will go green next time by on lap 53 of 60, give us a total of eight laps remaining in this evening's event. It's going to be a single file restart, which means the lap cars will not come into play in the outcome of this race, at least we hope not. This is the way they line up for the restart as Silver Fox is the leader. First time he's been out in front tonight. Alan Tanker is going to restart in second. Third, Chris Washer. Fourth place, Hayden Klein with McLeod in fifth. One lap down in twelfth is Stephen Polar the third. But then you got Adam Chambers who worked his way back onto the tail end of the lead lap. He's now up to sixth for this restart. Our winner from Daytona a week ago, Kevin White, is up to seventh. Carson Gum having a great run in eighth. A lap down in thirteenth, that'll be William Duncan. Fourteenth a lap down is Drew Austin. Trent Dunham is going to be in ninth, though, and in 10th place, I believe, is Jake Cole. And that's it for the cars that are on the lead lap and on the racetrack. Oh, wait, no, we got 11th place Kyle Matthews. My apologies. 12th place a lap down is going to be Stephen Poehler the third. 13th a lap down is William Duncan. 14th, Drew Austin. 15th place is going to be Cody Lamas with Austin LaPlante in 16th. And 17th is John Cittadino. 17 cars left to battle it out. 11 of them on the lead lap. Here we go, eight laps of racing. Who's gonna win? Silver Fox gets a good jump, but so too did Alan Tanker. Now we really hope and pray these guys are gonna be able to keep it green here to the end because we really don't want to have another caution flag take place here. Not with so few cars. We've only got 17 of them on the racetrack, 11 on the lead lap. It's truly come down to a race of survival here. That's why they call it an endurance race, but I don't think I ever remember seeing a Coke 600 that really was such a wreck fest and had such violent wrecks as we've seen during the course of this long evening. As Silver Fox opens up daylight between himself and Alan Tanker. Keep in mind, Tanker, Klein, all those drivers back there from second on back got pieces of that incident. The only one who didn't was James Silver Fox, and he's showing it here. That car is 100% right now, and he is starting to pull away from a now battle for second, Hayden Klein, down the inside of Alan Tanker. They are three wide behind him for third. Chambers, Kevin White, Carson Gum, and James McLeod as they start to close in now on the battle for second. They'll make it a six-man fight for second place. All meanwhile going on a great distance behind James Silverfox. Tanker almost gets the wall off there. Almost came down off the nose of, of McLeod. That could have been caution flag but fortunately we're still green Kevin White now moving by for second place what a great momentum streak he's been on after picking up his first win of his career in the NSDRA last week at Daytona there's Carson Gum though right alongside Hayden Klein not too bad for his second straight season he had a win last season and now he's got a great top five run possibly going here but nobody and I mean nobody is anywhere even close to James Silver Fox he just checked out and he is running away with this thing Barring anything happening to the 19, he's got this thing in the bag. There's no doubt about it, unless he can't make it on fuel. Remember, these drivers all made pit stops back around, I think it was lap 43. So they should be able to make it 18 or 17 laps around on just one tank of fuel. But you never know. The one thing that is on the benefit of Silver Fox is the gap that he has opened up between himself and and second place. If indeed he does run out of fuel, he may be able to get around to the start finish line in time before they catch him and pass him for the win. Silver Fox, three laps to go. James Silver Fox, to my knowledge, only has one Snickers Cup Series win. It came last season. I believe it might have been at New Hampshire. I'm not sure. I know he drove the number seven for Tommy Baldwin racing then. That was his rookie season. This season, he comes in in his second year in the Snickers Cup Series. Currently 20th in points, so we can't say he's had a terrible season. And he may be en route with two to go on picking up his second Snickers Cup Series victory in his first of Season 6. Silver Fox has been having a great run over in the Mobile One Cup Series, a two-time winner over there. 
He was the only multiple time winner over there before Jordan Hester picked up his second win of the season last night here at Charlotte. And his truck series career so far not going terribly well, but he can at least go good in two of three series as the white flag is displayed. There's no doubt about it. James Silverfox is going to completely dominate here in the final few laps of this event. And he's going to pick up the second win of the season. No, third win of the season for Dodge. Barney Ward ended up winning the season opening Daytona 500. Drew Austin followed up with a win not too long after. I believe that was at Las Vegas. And here tonight in the longest race of the season, out of turn four for the final time, James Silverfox picks up his second career Snickers Cup Series victory. He wins the endurance race, the Coke 600 at Charlotte. Boy, the decision to keep Dodge in the NSCRA here in season six obviously has turned out to be a good one because so far in 17 Snickers Cup Series events, they have three victories and all with three different drivers. And James Silverfox tonight, definitely this is gonna be a big momentum boost for them in the standings. I said he came in 20th in points. This could put him maybe in contention for a top 10 position next week if he can get yet another good run just like this. But the rest of the field was nowhere to be seen. And speaking of the rest of the field, we'll now update you on who exactly finished where. We're gonna do the whole uh, field that actually finished the race actually because they all deserve recognition after what we've seen go down here tonight. Silver Fox with the win. Kevin White, one week after his win at Daytona, he'll follow it up with a runner-up finish here tonight. James McLeod, great run for the 51 from Twinix Racing. He'll get third. Adam Chambers and Carson Gum, fourth and fifth. Great comeback finishes for both of them as they were trapped a lap down earlier on. And Chambers comes in 10th in points. This will keep him inside the top 10 in the standings. Then you got Alan Tanker right behind the winner of this race last year, Hayden Klein. They'll get 6th and 7th. They've been up front all night long. Trent Dunham battles back for 8th. Ninth place is going to be Jake Cole. And 10th place was the pole sitter, Chris Washer. Looking further down, how about the Kyle Matthews machine? Great run last week at Daytona. Follows it up with yet another great run and only a second start in 11th place. William Duncan finished in 12th. Citadino 13th. Austin LaPlante will finish in 14th place with Drew Austin in 15th. Stephen Paul III was 16th. And Cody Lamas was the final driver to actually finish the race. He finished in the 17th position. Let's take a look now, see if we may have actually a battle for the points lead heading into next week's race. I don't really think so, though. Charles Jackson finished in 21st. McCrory in 27th. And Ralph Mason finished in 35th place. Austin LaPlante did not finish high enough to be able to take the points lead from Charles Jackson. So... After all said and done, Charles Jackson will still keep the points lead heading into next week's race at Kentucky. It's been a long, grueling race for these drivers. I'm certain that they are going to want to head to their haulers now, get some shut-eye, because it can be mentally and physically draining, these kind of races. And we are finally over with our longest race of the season. The Coke 600's in the books. James Silverfox is your winner as he picks up his first win of Season 6 here in the Snickers Cup Series. We'll see you guys as we pack up and head to Kentucky for a great race weekend then. Trucks, Mobile, and Snickers will all be coming your way from that racetrack, Kentucky Speedway. Hope you'll tune in for that. If you enjoyed this evening's very long race, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. Here comes your official finisher results, overall points, stands, and rookie points heading into next week's race at Kentucky as you've been watching production of the SRA Offline Racing at its best.